Here are the top stories for today, June 23, 2021. Get completely vaccinated. The country's vaccine czar stresses the importance of getting the second dose of COVID-19 jabs to be protected against the disease. The arrival of 50,000 doses of Sputnik V shots from Russia is deferred due to ongoing upgrades and developments. The government, however, assures this will not affect the efficacy of the jabs. No let up in fighting illegal drugs. The PNP says the arrest of five suspects and seizure of 58 million pesos worth of Shabu in Cavite will help cripple drug trade in Metro Manila. And close to 60 million Filipinos are eligible to vote in next year's polls. The Commission on Elections seeks more voters 100 days before the registration deadline. Good day, I am William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story for today, the arrival of the 50,000 doses of Sputnik V's COVID-19 vaccine will be deferred to a later date due to ongoing upgrades and the latest developments. Vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr. assures that the unforeseen delay in the delivery will not in any way compromise the efficacy of the vaccines. Galvez said they have already informed all local government units who have administered the first dose of Sputnik V that the schedule for the second shot will be pushed back and will be rescheduled. He said the Gamalaya Institute has provided real-world data that Sputnik V delivers an efficacy rate of 79.4 on the 28th day after the first shot of Component 1. Sputnik V is a viral vector type of vaccine that requires longer interval periods for the two shots. Galvez said the Gamalaya Institute through the Russian Direct Investment Fund has formally requested to the Philippine Food and Drug Administration or FDA to amend the interval period between the two doses of Sputnik V from the minimum 21 days to 90 days. The FDA is currently studying this request. Health experts assure that full vaccination can mitigate the effect of the more transmissible Delta variant of COVID-19. As such, vaccine czar Carlito Galvez Jr. is urging the public not to miss their second dose for full protection. Talaga as much possible, yung mga ibang hindi pa nakaka-second dose, ay magpa-second dose na po kasi talagang once na hindi po talaga tayo nagkaroon ng second dose, uh, hindi po tayo fully protected from the, the variant. Mm -hmm. More Pfizer jabs have been delivered in several areas in the Visayas. Meanwhile, the Gupan City also received the same jabs but urges its constituents to get vaccinated regardless of the brand. The details from Marita Mawai. Following the appeal of the city government of Iloilo for more COVID-19 jobs, the national government has sent Sinovac and Pfizer vaccines in western Visayas. The Regional Vaccinations Operations Center says Iloilo City will get 10,000 vials of the Sinovac and 5,850 doses of the Pfizer vaccines. In Negros Occidental, the five-day rollout of Pfizer vaccines will start on Monday, June 28th. Negros Occidental received its first ever supply of 1,950 vials of Pfizer jobs last week since it is capable of providing an ultra-low temperature storage facility. Based on the guidelines, each LGU will be provided a schedule along with the site of the vaccination and the city or municipality must be responsible for the transport of their constituents to the assigned vaccination site. In Eastern Visayas, the health department picked Ormoc City as the pilot recipient for the initial Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines shipment. The DOH regional office received 195 vials of the vaccine brand, with each vial good for six doses. Mayor Richard Gomez said they have been chosen by the health department for its well-thought-out plans and for being aggressive in bringing the vaccines and its vaccination program to the barangay level. About 1,170 pre-listed recipients received their first dose today at the Ormoc City Superdome. 
Meanwhile, the City Health Office in Dagupan City, Pangasinan is currently doing profiling of the priority group who would be given the Pfizer jobs. This as the city government received 588 doses while the Region 1 Medical Center has 582 doses. As such, barangay nurses were tasked to survey who among those under the categories A1, A2, A3, and A5 want to be vaccinated with Pfizer. The city government urges private hospitals to prepare as the Pfizer vaccine has a little bit more side effects as compared to other brands. It also urges residents to still avail themselves of the other brands such as Sinovac as it can also protect from COVID-19. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Muahe. Malakanyang says the country has to adapt and change its strategies every time COVID-19 mutates. Presidential spokesperson Secretary Harry Roque said the decision of President Rodrigo Duterte on the continued use of face shields both outdoors and indoors is based on science, especially in light of the risk brought about by the highly transmissible Delta variant of COVID-19. Ang ating mga posisyon ay depende rin sa pagbabago sa siyensya. At dahil nalaman po natin kung anong anyun itong Delta strain neto na kailangan mas matindi ang proteksyon na ginagamit natin. At wala pong flip-flopping dyan dahil tayo nagpapatupad ng mga proteksyon, alinsunod na rin so kung paano nagmutate ang virus. Dr. Alethea de Guzman of the Department of Health's Epidemiology Bureau said a person who contracts the Delta variant can infect five to eight people. She also stressed the need for imposing travel restrictions and strong border control to prevent the entry of the Delta variant which is rapidly spreading around the world. At meron po tayong report galing sa ilang bansa na napapansin nila yung mga kaso na positibo para sa Delta variant. Um, nare-report na mas uh, mataas ang pagkaka-hospital sa kanila. Pero ang magandang balita at nabanggit nga po ay um, ang dalawang doses ng bakuna ay very protective po no? para protectahan from getting COVID-19 infection, even the ones na meron po ng Delta variant. Pagpasasamasamahin po natin ang face mask, face shield, and even physical distancing, they offer a 99% protection against getting or even transmitting that virus to other people. The government is in talks with the three Israeli health experts about the vaccination and jab logistics management in the country. Vaccine Czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said the government would adopt some Israeli strategies to further improve the country's data management and vaccine deployment plans. So far, the Israeli team has shared key strategies to effectively contain virus transmission and reduce active cases within communities. Galvez said they will also visit vaccination sites and cold storage facilities in Metro Manila. The country's vaccine czar said Israel has already won its battle against the pandemic through a collective effort. It also has expanded vaccine eligibility in May, which includes adolescents aged 12 to 15 year old. Since then, infections have fallen off sharply in recent weeks. Moreover, strict adherence to quarantine measures and border protocols are also said to bring down the number of their COVID-19 cases. The World Health Organization said global inequality fuels a two-track pandemic. It says the defining mark of COVID-19 is a lack of sharing of data, information, personal protective equipment, vaccines, and other life-saving tools. WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesu says that while a handful of countries have high vaccination rates and are now seeing lower hospitalizations, other countries in Africa and Asia are now facing steep epidemics. In Africa, he said, new infections and deaths remain high globally with a 40% increase in the number of new cases and deaths. The WHO chief said they are working with a South African consortium to establish its first COVID mRNA vaccine technology transfer hub. Still to come, authorities are now probing the cause of the diarrhea outbreak in a village in Davao de Oro. And relentless campaign, the PNP says the recent buy-bust operation in Cavite is a big blow to the drug trade in Metro Manila. 
Details ahead, this is the PNA Newsroom. The COVID-19 pandemic has greatly changed our lives for the worse. Lives and jobs were lost and economies reached a meltdown. Thanks to the arrival of safe and effective vaccines, we are one step closer to normalcy. It's time to do our part, get vaccinated for our safety and for our recovery. If you are there in that community, go there and have yourself vaccinated by any of the vaccines available. They are all potent, they are all uh, effective. I would like to appeal to all our Kababayans Please get vaccinated against COVID-19 and be the government partner in preventing further spread of the disease. I encourage you to get vaccinated as soon as possible time. These vaccines are safe and they are the key to reopening our society. The need for international solidarity and cooperation cannot be made clearer than this pandemic because everyone is safe. No one is safe globally until everybody is safe. Vaccines work. Cagayan de Oro City is requesting more ventilators amid the surge in COVID-19 cases. House Deputy Speaker Rufus Rodriguez asked the Department of Health to send 24 ventilators to various hospitals in the city due to the influx of COVID-19 patients and some were even forced to wait in line for a vacancy. Rodriguez earlier pointed out that the national government has neglected Mindanao in its COVID-19 response, particularly the vaccine distribution in the region. He also hit vaccine czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. for his supposed lack of priority in addressing the uptick in COVID-19 cases in Mindanao. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque maintains that the government has been pushing for an equitable distribution of the COVID-19 jabs nationwide. He said around 38% of the country's vaccine supply was distributed to Metro Manila and surrounding areas and the remaining balance will be delivered to the rest of the Philippines. Roque attributed the surge in coronavirus infections to low compliance with health protocols in parts of Visayas and Mindanao. Authorities are investigating the reported outbreaks of diarrhea in two towns in Negros Oriental and Davao de Oro, with the Philippine Red Cross sending supplies to provide clean water to help affected residents. Health authorities are now investigating reports of a number of children coming down with diarrhea, fever, and other symptoms in the municipality of Bacong in Negros Oriental. Dr. Socrates Villamor, Provincial Chief of the Department of Health, said the town's Rural Health Unit learned about the incidents only through social media posts. One post mentioned a three-year-old child admitted to a hospital here due to diarrhea apparently caused by amoebiasis. Another netizen said that the water in their house was in an area with murky waters and hoped that authorities would take action on the said matter. The health unit has yet to determine whether there is a need to have water samples taken for testing. Meanwhile, the Philippine Red Cross has sent aid to residents affected by a diarrhea outbreak in Barangay Pasyan, Moncayo, Davao de Oro. On June 17, the village was declared under a state of calamity after a total of 235 households or 301 individuals in nine puroks were affected by a diarrhea outbreak. Five persons died while four others are admitted to various hospitals. Laboratory tests found bacteria that caused the outbreak in the village. P9 
PRC Chair Senator Richard Gordon said they have deployed two water tankers, a water purification unit, welfare desk, and a first aid station to provide aid to 173 affected persons. PRC will also conduct a hand-washing activity to inform the people of the importance of proper hygiene to prevent cases like diarrhea. Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte on Monday also extended aid to the residents of Barangay Pasyan, packs and bottled water which were distributed to the affected residents. Mayor Ramil Gentugaya and Vice Mayor Joanna Gentugaya led the relief activities in the barangay. The country now has almost 60 million registered voters with less than 100 days left remaining for sign-up. The Commission on Elections said as of June 18, the number of registered voters was at 58.2 million, while 1.2 million applications were approved by the Election Registration Board as of April 19. The application of over 800,000 voters who will turn 18 on Election Day in May 2022 has also been approved. The nationwide voting registration period will run until September 30, 2021. All offices of election officers nationwide accept applications for registration from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Mondays to Fridays. Some branches, however, implement physical closures due to COVID-19 cases or quarantine restrictions. A total of 702 poor residents of Albay received over 5,000 pesos each as government assistance this month through the Tulong Panghanap Buhay Sa Ating Disadvantaged Displaced Workers or Tupad Program of the Department of Labor and Employment or DOLE. DOLE allocated a total of 3.7 million pesos for all the Tupad beneficiaries from Pioduran and Legaspi City. Tupad provides emergency employment for displaced workers, underemployed and seasonal workers, particularly those displaced by natural disasters and the COVID-19 pandemic, as priority recipients. Local government units in the province earlier received checks under the DOLA Integrated Livelihood and Emergency Employment Program as assistance for various projects. Albay and other provinces of Bicol region that were worst hit by strong typhoons last year were the biggest recipients of government cash assistance under Tupad and the COVID-19 Adjustment Measures Program, among others. Philippine National Police Chief Guillermo Eliazar commended the police and anti-drug units involved in the by-bust operation in Imos Cavite, which led to the seizure of 58 million pesos worth of shabu. Eliazar said the by-bust will help cripple the operations of illegal drug syndicates in Metro Manila. Aside from the drugs, authorities also arrested five suspects and seized two firearms, ammunition, and drug paraphernalia. The five suspects were identified as members of the Tamano Drug Group, which supplies narcotics to the National Capital Region and Rizal Province. They also have connections with former Talitay Maguindanao Mayor Montasir Sabal, who is on the government's narco list. Sabal was killed after grabbing the service firearm of a police escort while en route to Camp Prame, Quezon City on June 17, following his arrest at the Batangas port a night earlier. Sabal was also a supplier of firearms and explosive materials to the terror group Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters or BIFF. Up next, ulterior motives, a local official says communist link groups use indigenous people's schools to solicit funds abroad. And Baguio City aims to plant 10,000 trees in celebration of its Pine Tree Festival. Back after a quick break, stay with the PNA Newsroom.
You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. Local officials and tribal groups condemned a new communist terrorist and their legal fronts for using indigenous peoples and schools catering to IPs for their propaganda. More on this from Marita Mawahi. Surigao del Sur Governor Alexander Pimentel disclosed that schools run by supporters of communist terrorist groups are being used to solicit international donations. Pimentel said the Tribal Filipino Program of Surigao del Sur Inc. and the Alternative Learning Center for Agricultural and Livelihood Development have been used as the milking cows of communist groups and their legal fronts. He said they use indigenous people evacuated by red-linked organizations during skirmishes for their propaganda, with some of the evacuees as young as one or two years old. Both schools are also believed to serve as recruitment haven for the NPA rebels. In Bukidnon, the Army's 10th Infantry Division confirmed that it is monitoring some 82 private schools suspected to be recruitment fronts of the CPP NPA. This after a school in Poroktu, Sagundanon Village, Kitao Tao Town, was demolished because of its alleged links to the CPP NPA. Division spokesperson Major Jerry Lamosao said the Mindanao Interfaith Services Foundation Inc. One of the 82 schools was recently identified to have operated the NPA recruitment school in Poroktu for four years. Village leaders have issued a resolution to demolish the Miss P school over false teachings and ideologies by the NPA aside from using students for rallies and labor among others. Meanwhile, Dato Rico Maca, IP Mandatory Representative of San Miguel Sorigao del Sur, Lambasad Bayan Muna Representative Yefemia Kulyamat, for turning her back on the Manobo tribe, saying she is a threat to IP communities. Maka said Kulyamat never condemned the series of IP killings and violent attacks perpetrated by communist rebels against tribal leaders, such as last month's abduction of five tribesmen by the NPA in Carmen, Sitio Gakub. On January 29, the League of Caraga Indigenous Peoples mandatory representatives declared Kulyamat as persona non grata in the ancestral domain of the Manobo, Mamanwa, Mandaya, Higaunon, and Banwaon of Caraga region. Earlier, Kulyamat opposed the establishment of DepEd accredited schools claiming IPs or LUMADs are victims of militarization under the Duterte administration. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Marita Moahe. 21 former New People's Army rebels from South Cotabato have received nearly 2 million pesos in financial assistance under the government's Enhanced Comprehensive Local Integration Program, or ECLIP. The South Cotabato Provincial Social Welfare and Development Office said the released grants comprise the firearms renumeration and immediate reintegration and livelihood assistance for the returnees. 16 of the former rebels received checks worth 86,000 pesos each, while three others got 174,000 pesos. The remaining two received a combined 422,000 pesos in immediate reintegration, livelihood, and remuneration grants. Governor Reynaldo Tamayo Jr. meanwhile said the provincial government remains committed to assisting rebels who want to surrender and go back to their communities. He urged them to encourage their former comrades to also embrace the government's offer to return to the folds of the law. A lawmaker on Tuesday urged the Department of Transportation and the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board to release the payouts for public utility vehicle drivers under the Transport Service Contracting Program. House Ways and Means Committee Chair Joey Salceda cited that only around 1 billion of the 5.5 billion peso service contracting budget has been distributed to bus and jeepney operators. The program was first launched under the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act or Bayanihan II, which is set to expire on June 30. He argued that it would be difficult to keep the program running if the government is unable to pay contractors for the services they have already rendered. Salceda also warned of a looming complication in paying service contractors due to the expiry of Bayanihan II, which authorized the program. Malacanang on Monday said it will respect the decision of Congress should it extend the validity of Bayanihan II. In celebration of World Environment Month this June, 
The Department of Tourism, or DOT, has reiterated the need for tourists to educate themselves on sustainable interaction with marine wildlife. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puya said, Irresponsible interaction with marine wildlife can cause severe long-term damage to them and their environment. She said, tourists must learn to properly observe and engage marine wildlife to protect and sustain marine biodiversity. Puyat said the DOT will conduct awareness seminars on sustainable and responsible marine tourism guidelines, especially now that local tourism continuously picks up on coastal destinations. The DOT has issued a memorandum to ensure that tourism interactions do not adversely affect marine wildlife behavior and population. Future plans include identifying, accrediting, and recognizing marine wildlife tourism sites in the country that are dedicated and compliant with the regulations. The city government of Baguio is targeting to plant 10,000 pine seedlings this year in celebration of the Pine Tree Festival. The event coincides with Arbor Day in the Philippines, celebrated every June 25 by planting trees. Families, groups, and organizations interested to join the tree planting are urged to register in the re-greening activity. The tree festival is extended until September when the city celebrates its charter anniversary. The Department of Environment and Natural Resources has also launched the community's plant tree program to drum up the celebration of Environment Month. DENR CAR is giving free pine and other tree seedlings to barangays with free spaces and to individuals who want to grow them. Here is another look at today's biggest stories. Get completely vaccinated. The country's vaccine czar stresses the importance of getting the second dose of COVID-19 jabs to be protected against the disease. The arrival of 50,000 doses of Sputnik V shots from Russia is deferred due to ongoing upgrades and developments. The government, however, assures this will not affect the efficacy of the jabs. No let up in fighting illegal drugs. The PNP says the arrest of five suspects and seizure of 58 million pesos worth of Shabu in Cavite will help cripple drug trade in Metro Manila. And close to 60 million Filipinos are eligible to vote in next year's polls. The Commission on Elections seeks more voters 100 days before the registration deadline. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I am William Theo. Good day. Stay safe, everyone.